Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to the drum machine designer. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, we are inside Logic Pro on an iPad Pro M1. Let's click on Create Project, then select Tracks. When you are on the screen to create a new track, let's ensure that we create a MIDI track but, and let's click on the three dots and ensure that as a patch instrument you have Drum Machine Designer. If you don't click here on the vertical up and down arrow, select Instrument Drums and then the bottom one will be Drum Machine Designer. When you have done that, click Create. Okay, we have a, a new track. As you can see, you have an arrow pointed to the right, which um, uh, will give you a clue as per previous tutorial that that this could be a folder stack or a summing stack which contains multiple tracks. As we open this up, we have only one subtrack which is the empty pad. At the main track level, if we click on the track editor, you can see you can create a MIDI region, right? And also, if I open up the plugin editor, you can see that uh, you have option to add effect, which this reminds you, of course, of being a summing track, okay? and this being, being the main track for that summing stack. Okay, let's close these down. Now, let's um, also open up the play surface, and as you can see, you are in drum pads mode, as you can verify from here, where you can, of course, uh, click different um, uh, pads to play them. But, of course, now you don't have any instrument selected. So let's close that play surface. Now, let's go to the browser. And uh, let's go to Instrument Patches. Now let's go to the filter and let's select the Draw Machine Designer as a filter. And uh, then let's choose one, the first one, Absolute Zero. Click, hold, drag and drop at uh, empty kit level, of course. And then uh, let's close the browser. And now you have loaded that patch, which is a Draw Machine Designer patch. If you expand the stack, you can see a lot of subtracks which are related kit pieces which have been preloaded for you as part of that patch. Now, if you go to the play surface, you, you see that uh, through the drum pads view or surface, they've been loaded accordingly to the respective pads and you can play with them. Really nice indeed. If you open the uh, stack and you select one of the subtrack, you see the play surface view changes to keyboard, which you can verify through here. Let's close that. And the reason that it changes to keyboard is because if you open the plugin editor, you find the quick sampler for subtracks like so. But again, on the main track, you find just a compressor, which um, um, again, you cannot add an instrument at this level. Now let's close that plugin um, editor and uh, let's undo until we remove the um, drum machine design patch that we previously loaded. Okay, so now we are back to have this empty uh, stack for the drum machine designer. So how can we populate it? Well, first of all, let's go to the browser. Let's remove the filter, go up a level, select samples and uh, filter by drums. Okay, let's select these uh, TR-808 at uh, sample. Click, hold, drag, and you can see you can dr uh, drop it below the stack, but that's not what you need. And up the stack, you can only drop it at empty kit level or that main track level. So drop that, and as you can see, it opens up the play surface, and now you can see a kick one sample loaded for this first tab, which is associated with input node C1. Okay, really, really nice. Now, um, let's try a different way to load another sample. Well, let's search for the snare. Let's scroll down here, snare, TR-808, click and hold, drag, and let's drop it on the next pad. Now, we have created a new additional subtrack, as you can see here, number three, and we have also loaded that sample against uh, this other pad. Another way, actually, to achieve that is to, for example, create an additional subtrack. And the way to do that is click on Edit here, select a pad like this one, select on it again. Now you have an option to uh, select what is the input node, which in the, this case would be the one, which will be served to trigger, of course. 
and um, uh, the, the, uh, the part, the output node, which will go against the sampler, which is for each subtract. You can activate MIDI Learn to learn the input node. But then at the bottom here, you have an option to create a drum machine design subtract. Click on it, and you can see now additional option like the kit piece name, the kit name, the icon, the color. Uh, and here you can update the kit name for the kit piece as well. As you can see here, it says empty kit, right? And then the option here below, as you would expect, as we just mentioned them, but you have two additional one at the bottom, the resample part, which I will show you in a moment, and also the clear part to clear the part itself. Now, let's exit this go in play mode. Now, this uh, uh, part will not play anything because there is no instrument associated with it. Now, let's scroll uh, back up here and let's choose in a high hat. Let's click, drag, and drop against this part. Now, if I press this part again, you have a hi hat, which uh, is really nice, isn't it? Okay. Let's see what else we can do. So let's um, close that browser view. Now let's go up to main track level. Let's click here and let's click a MIDI. Um, actually, we do this in a moment. So let's remove this. Let's uh, go to the plugin area and let's add an audio effect and let's add an echo. Now, if I go back to, let's close this plugin editor. If I go back to play surface, now if I play this kick, I will have a, um, an echo applied. Because of course, the output is directed to that main um, track. And in, on that main track, we have an audio effect of type echo. Now, if I click on edit and then I select this part again, so click on it again, if I scroll down to the bottom, I have an option for resample part. Click on it. And now what happens? It has resampled this particular part, which is kick one, and uh, threw up the stack, uh, which for which it has applied also the echo effect and created uh, that sample and load onto a new part. Let's click on play here. And now uh, let's play this part. Okay. Now, Let's go back up here on the main track and let's go to plugin um, um, to the plugin um, area. Yeah, we have still a resample part one selected here. Let's go up to empty kit. Okay, so um, under what it says echo, let's click edit and remove that echo. Now let's close that plugin area. Let's open up the play surface again. If I press on this kick, just a normal kick. But if I press on this one, you will have the kick which has been sampled through the echo effect. Really nice, isn't it? Now, of course, you can click on it, click on it again, click on it again, and if you like, you can clear the pad. So that is how you clear pad as well. And then go back to the play uh, mode. And of course, this pad has been cleared. Okay, let's proceed and let's try to record something. So the main track is selected. Let's open up the uh, play surface and click uh, record. Okay, let's stop and let's close this. As you can see, we have created the MIDI region on the main track. Uh, which if I select the editor, we are on the piano roll and these are the notes that have been created. Right, let's close this, and as you can see, this uh, MIDI region then is played through the different uh, subtracks which are avail available in the stack. Um, play attention again, as I explained uh, in the previous tutorial, when I explained the summing stack, that if you go and select, for example, this snare here, and you go up to track level for that uh, snare one for that subtrack if you change the input channel for example to two then what happens when you click play will not play any longer so you need to leave these to channel one or all okay so just something uh, to remember in case you don't hear any more uh, the sound Okay, so we can, of course, delete that MIDI region, like so, and uh, move to a subtrack and record in there as well. In this case, of course, uh, I will have a keyboard, but um, you can also choose to, to have something 
something like uh, something different like a play surface like a drum pad if you prefer so like so but the different pads will go up and down uh, chromatically of course because it's using a quick sampler as an instrument um, okay so let's record something here Okay, let's stop. Let's close this play surface. As you can see, we have a recorded track against uh, that kick one. Okay, so hopefully that uh, makes sense. Now let's click undo and let's remove uh, different tracks and we go back to the original version of the drum machine designer uh, stack. Now, let's go back and reload that instrument patch, which we want to be of type uh, drum machine designer. Again, let's reload absolute zero against the uh, drum machine designer stack. Let's close the browser. Okay, so what I want to show you now is if you go to the play surface again and you click edit and um, now for that kick one pad, if you select it again, uh, you know that it's been triggered by an input node C1. Click on it again, and it says input node C1, but it also says output node C0, which means if you go back in play mode, when you click on it, what effectively is playing is if you go to subtract uh, two for kick one, is playing that at C0 level, okay, which would be this one. Okay, that's an interesting uh, thing to to remember. So uh, edit mode again, select it, select it again. The input note is C1, but the output note in terms of what is being played against that quick sampler is actually C0. That's interesting. Now, additionally, if I was, for example, to go to this pad, which has an input node of D1, if I was to change that to C1, like so, for example, and then close this and go back in play mode, as I press the, this kick one pad, also the next one will play it because they have the same input node. Okay, so just remember that you can do that as well. Of course, you can reset these to D1, uh, like so. Additionally, you have also an exclusive group here. And if you select one, like for example, this one, number one, and then you go to the previous pad and you set the same as a number one. Now, when you go back in play mode, when one play, the other one, the other ones which are in the same exclusive group will stop. It's like the choke groups that you find in other apps. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I hope you enjoyed the introduction on the drum machine designer. And as always, see you next time. Bye.